Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now we're going to have a, a rehouse today of a spider that we've we've not shown on the channel before and we have had a couple come through from time to time and um, it is in fact uh, the staple spider of the hobby and what we're talking about is that South American beauty the LP or the Lacedoria Parabiana uh, commonly known as the salmon pink bird eater now this is um, a spider that's a very very big spider in actual fact it's probably around about the fourth largest spider in the world it can get up to sort of anywhere between eight and ten inches eight to nine inches is pretty max but we do get the odd ones a little bit bigger they're a new world spider and they are really the mainstay of the hobby and I think just about everyone at some point or another has had one of these beauties in their collection now we've not shown them before we've uh, we've had a few I'll say and they've been in the background but we recently recently uh, got given one and it's a large one and it is such a stunner it really is so we thought it's about time we done a nice little showcase on the most commonly kept spider in the hobby the salmon pink bird eater so what we got is we've chose this enclosure here now um you've not seen one of these on the channel either this is something else that came in with some other bits and pieces and i really quite like the look of it i like the long the long aspect to it it's fairly short as well so again it's something that um with our big big spiders we don't want to give them a massive amount of room we could have gone 30 high and still been perfectly safe but this is uh, i thought this would make a really really nice little enclosure for this spider so we've got a completely open top this is a mesh top as well so i know there are a little bit of a controversy over mesh tops i personally have never had any issues with them at all I really haven't had any trouble at all and I think in many cases it's really blown out of proportion um, so what we're going to do we are going to fill this up and we're going to make this to be a little bit of a sort of a, a woodland like sort of scenario that's the plan anyway that's what we're going to try and uh, we're going to fill it with our normal potting compost we're going to get a load of that in there and as you can see, this is actually quite dry at the moment. Now, being a South American spider, they come from the northern parts of Brazil. And they do like it really quite warm and quite humid. But one of the reasons they're so popular in the hobby is the fact that they are so easy to look after. And one of the reasons they're easy to look after is because their tolerances for different types of habitat is really, really varied. So it means you really can't go wrong. Whatever you do will pretty much suit your spider. And one of the reasons that is, is because in Brazil, they do for, I think it's four or five months of the year, it's actually quite dry. So they've actually learned to be able to cope with really dry situations. And then the rest of the year, it's really the opposite. It's really wet, very, very humid, hot and humid. So we, they've, they've managed to be able to um, evolve into being able to cope with really big extremes of um, humidity. And this can be nothing but a bonus to us guys in the hobby because it gives us a huge leeway of what we want to do now i think we're going to mix a bit of beastie mix into it as well i think that will uh, be well worth a try we can get some get a little bit of leaf litter and stuff like that in it as well I'm not looking at a lot just a little bit to give it a bit of texture I'll probably do. I'm going to mix it up a bit. 
this is just root roots so what we do is we just take that out keep the leafy bits throw that bit in the bin we don't really need that bit but any of the leafy bits we can leave in there because they're just basically breaking down and disappearing and they're all helping make this a really nice thing now there'll be springtails and isopods within that as well so that's always a good thing now what we can do now is we've got some lovely look at this lovely great big lumps of wood that we can set in here we'll try and set them up in such a way try and get a little bit of something going on not quite sure what but we'll get a little bit of something going on a bit more soil um let's see actually no i've changed my mind what we're going to do, we're going to put our plant in here, I think. So what we got is an ivy here. We give it a good soak beforehand, so it's ready to go. Tip that bit of soil in there. This will give it, look at that, all the soil's fallen off. And we're just left there with the roots. Not a problem. So we're going to tuck that in there and grab some of that. We can build this up in the in the back corner here. And then we're going to get our piece of wood, put that there. We'll probably find our spider will probably like to climb up on here as well. So we can tuck this down. Ideally, this piece of ivy will grow and spread itself around a little bit, all being well. Right, I'm going to put our water bowl over here, like that. We've got some moss here as well. Um, it's not the best bit of moss, that, is it? I wonder if we've got a bit better stuff here. Yeah, oh, this looks better. And what we've done is um, some of our moss that we keep outside, it gets very, very wet. And uh, if it's left to be completely soaked, we've had a lot of rain just lately, and then we had the frosts. That didn't do it any favours either. Um, it can sort of like um, kill your moss off a little bit so we have to be a bit careful with it I wonder if I can get that in there there we go we give her somewhere just to tuck herself away in there now if she wants nice and easy All right, where's me let's get the I need a longer pipe, he says. Oh, we've got no gas in it either. There we go. So as you would have noted there in the beginning, we looked at um, the tank and we've got a complete mesh top to this enclosure. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this piece of moss here is actually really quite dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to soak it. And what that does in turn is it soaks this soil underneath it, which will give it a really, really wet area. And it won't take long. It'll only take like um, maybe an hour and all of this end will soak up that excess water and it will move it in there. We're going to keep this area here dry so she can get in under here if she wants. And we'll do that. And then what we've got here, we've got another piece of wood here. It's so funny when you can't see what you're doing. You can. Should be that 
second way around or that way around? What do you think? I think maybe that way around. So we're going to look that like that. Should it be there? Actually, we'll leave it like that. What we're, what we're trying to achieve here is our spider can come in here and this has made this a little bit more secure. It's made it a little bit more tight, if you like, and that will give her some confidence. And we can leave these here. We can tuck this down. It smells beautiful. It does smell nice, don't it? If only we had smell-o-vision. And you can smell all of this natural wood and everything else. Now, you might sort of look at this and you think to yourself, we've taken up quite a lot of space, but spiders will use every you know achievable thing. So she will get down in amongst it. If she's feeling a little bit threatened, she might just come down in here, burrow down at this corner, just get her head out of the way. She can come out here. There's plenty of room for her to move around. She'll clamber over all of this over here. She will find her favourite spot to sit in and just chill out. And when we get her in there, she will look really big in amongst this. Now, if needs be, if we want, we can always remove this piece of wood if it's not if it's going to cause us any issues. I personally think it will be fine. Give her all right, she'll give her something else to move over, climb around, everything else. And when we come to feeding, this will be a great enclosure because we can throw um, dubia roaches in. She's big enough, she'll take dubia roaches. She'd even take one of our hissing roaches. And if we use the male dubias, they really just wander around. Females will burrow down and disappear. And then we might not see them for months. And then one day, one will move and she'll be close enough to feel it and she'll grab it. But the males are out and about all the time. So it's, um, it's just really a case of her hunting them. I'm not going to use that. Of her hunting them. Now then, let's have a look at this absolutely gorgeous spider. Now this came in from a, a subscriber. This isn't what it lived in, by the way. This is what he used to actually transport it down to us so it, it didn't live in this box but it was a lovely box just to be able to get her here and hopefully she's going to be as good as gold now another reason we decided to um to, to do this video is because this is probably one of the best examples I have seen of one of these spiders. She is in absolutely perfect condition. Really, really pretty. Absolutely gorgeous. And you can see there, she's quite a big spider. She's so um, leg span, she's probably cracking on for about seven inches or so. And she is absolutely wonderful. And you can see the, um, the red hairs on the abdomen. She's got a velvet black abdomen with them red hairs. And you can see how long they are. You notice she's not bald at all. These guys do kick up urticating hairs. They are a new world spider after all. So they use urticating hairs as a defense system. And as you can see, in her lifetime, she has never felt the need to actually do that. She's never felt stressed enough to have to kick up urticating hairs. So she is in absolutely pristine condition. She just had a little tiny move there, and it's because I'm tipping the, the enclosure, she's probably feeling a little bit, a little bit loose of foot. So what we're gonna do, we wanna try and work out the best way to get her in without upsetting her. We don't want to catch her because as you can see she is in absolutely immaculate condition so we don't really want to um, see her kicking any hairs up so what we're going to do we're going to try and get her to walk out of this tub into this enclosure. 
So I'm going to bring this around here, like so. And what we're going to try and do is get her to come down in here, if we can, without getting too excited. Now we don't know how she's going to behave because we've never done anything with her. And she's going to be right underneath my nose. So if there is going to be any hair kicking, it's going to be right underneath my nose. And I will run to the back of the room. Yeah, you run to the back of the room. Um, right, we're, we're going to try and do this. You see how, as we're tipping it, the substrate is moving, which is going to make her try and climb upwards. Here we go, nice and gently. Come on, sweetheart. You just get her facing in the right direction. We do our best so that she don't get upset. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you don't want to be kicking any hairs. There we go. She's in. And we don't want to do that. Can the lady knock the desk then? Sorry. All right. We'll just leave her there for a second. Just let her get her bearings. Let her sort herself out. If you come around side, you get an absolutely beautiful view of her now. Look at that. Yep. Try and stay off the bench. You can see where she's laying web down already. These guys really are quite heavy webbers when they're on the move. So there's a good chance in a few weeks' time this will be smothered in, in web. And we might have to look at putting her in something a little larger later on. Um, we will see how we see how we go really. These aren't going to be, um, they're not the most energetic of spiders. Right. Let's help camera lady out for a minute. This is the problem when you're short, <laughs> you're afflicted. Thank you. Oh, she's coming to see me. Yeah. You see, look, as soon as I'm out of the way, they're like, take a chance. You can see how she's really, really well behaved. Now, these guys aren't known for being aggressive or defensive. They really are fantastic beginner spiders. Here we go. We don't want you coming out. Let me just put you there. I just want to move this. I don't want you on my hand either. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that abdomen. You see there, there's no loss of hair there at all. Absolutely fantastic. This was an absolute credit to her previous owner, who unfortunately has come into some ill health and uh, is looking to recuperate in Spain. So he could no longer keep her. And he was really quite upset as having to give her up and I can understand why because she is absolutely beautiful. What we wanted to do is go down on the floor instead of climbing. So we're just going to try and maneuver her. Here we go. You're not quite, you're not quite having it are you? There we go. So as we were saying, these are a new world spider. They make fantastic beginner spiders because of their temperament. They really are really well behaved. I wouldn't um, encourage anyone to handle these guys. They do have really large fangs, very, very large. Their venom is quite mild, but the pain that you would feel through them fangs would be absolutely awesome. It would be really, really painful, I'm sure. So we, um, we wouldn't really recommend handling them. Now, as we said earlier on, we're looking at um, humidity levels. Anywhere up in the 70s is going to be perfectly fine for these. They will tolerate it much, much um, more humid, but there really is no need. They will follow through literally from anything from sort of 60% right the way up into 85, 90%.
They have a huge tolerance. So if we aim at keeping them around about 70%, you're not going to be far wrong. They can handle it really quite dry. Now in terms of food, a big girl like this, she will take on um, full grown dubia roaches and also she will take on um, hissing roaches as well. But they have a fantastic feed response. They're, they really are strong feeders. And if you get one as a sling, you're going to have it almost adult size within a year, 15 months. They grow really quick. And this is because of the way they feed. And being a beginner spider, everyone likes to see their spider feed. So they tend to get fed a lot because they never say no. So they grow really, really fast. That's not to say you want to grow yours fast. You want to try and step it down and spread them out. This girl here, as you can see, she has been grown on lovingly. Someone has really, really looked after this spider. She's absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful, beautiful spider. Right. I think we're pretty much there. I say she will end up webbing most of this up. And it probably won't look anything like this in a couple of weeks. She will have... Um, more than likely made it her own and it will be covered. Now with the mesh top, we've got this on here. So keeping up that humidity will be quite a problem with this top if you don't stay on top of things. So what we're gonna do is rather than spraying this, we can spray our moss to keep our moss active. And then what we can do, if we wanna add more um, humidity to the enclosure, we can literally pour water down this edge and soak that end of the soil. That will give her a gradient so she can choose to be in the really damp up this end or she can come down here and be in the dry. We'll also soak our water up here for our plant so this corner will be wet as well. So this gives us enough of a tolerance area for her to choose exactly where she wants to be. Now um, in our room it's very very warm so with this type of top as in all of our enclosures we get an awful lot of um, evaporation through. So we have to stay on top. You might find if your room is slightly cooler, you won't need it so much. Although these guys do like it warm, they will tolerate it quite cool. So they really are ideal. You just can't go wrong. That, all that being said, I don't think there is, it's almost one of them spiders, there isn't a right and wrong way of keeping them because they will tolerate almost anything. So they're very, very good. Right, I think we'll, um, we're just about done there. I'm going to put the lid on her, let her settle down. We'll give her a day or two, and then we'll feed her. And I think she is going to be one of them spiders that we're going to end up coming back and having another look at, because she really is an impressive spider. And for a, a common spider, what an amazing thing. Absolutely beautiful. Right then, I am sweating buckets in here. It's very, very warm. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.